this is Dane Young with ICBCE.com. You can find me on Twitter at YoungTech. I'm really excited to share this video with you. It comes along with uh, a script, a PowerShell script that I'm releasing to the web. Uh, and you can find that in my blog post. In this video, I'm, I'm going to show you how to take uh, three servers that we previously deployed using Microsoft Deployment Toolkit and use a PowerShell script to uh, join them to a cluster, a failover cluster, and then install and configure storage spaces direct on each of those uh, nodes in the cluster. So uh, the prerequisite to this video is the previous video that I recorded where we deployed uh, three virtual machines, virtual servers, uh, using Hyper-V Server 2016 and Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. So I'd recommend you go watch that video first and then come back and watch this video for uh, the PowerShell script that will join all of the uh, Hyper-V servers to the same cluster. I'll go ahead and walk through that with you uh, throughout this video. So uh, again, if, in case you're not familiar, Hyper-V Server 2016 is Microsoft's free hypervisor, so everything you're seeing in this video is 100% uh, free of charge from Microsoft, including Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, PowerShell, and Hyper-V Server. And I've provided a, um, a free PowerShell script that you can use and modify to your heart's content. Um, and the first thing that you need to do is modify any of the variables that include things like the cluster name, the domain name, the list of nodes, the uh, cluster IP, the node specific for remoting that we'll use PowerShell remoting to connect to, um, any resiliency settings that you want to set for the uh, storage spaces direct, which would be either parity or mirror, and then number of volumes that you want to create, and then the size of the volumes. And if we execute this script, the first thing that's going to do is it's going to create the cluster using the three nodes that are specified in the list of nodes parameter, and then it's going to validate the, that uh, cluster and run the uh, cluster validation report. Uh, I pause the script for two minutes to uh, give the administrator an opportunity to go out and uh, open up the validation report, uh, which you can find the path to in the PowerShell script. And so we'll go, out, we'll go ahead and go out to that folder. We'll open up the validation report, uh, which is an XML file or HTM, HTM file that has an XML file. And we'll go ahead and review to make sure there aren't any errors or failures uh, with this validation report. If there's any errors or failures, uh, you want to stop the script from executing, review what those errors or failures are, and then come back and re-execute the script. Um, so that's uh, the reason why I put the two-minute pause in there is to uh, give the administrator enough time to go check this report, make sure everything is uh, at least successful or warning, and then uh, go ahead and continue through. So if we're looking at a couple of these warnings here, uh, we can just kind of do a, a spot check, make sure there's nothing critical. Um, there's not in this particular environment, so we'll go ahead and let the script continue along and proceed, which again, I have a, a two minute timeout set uh, that it won't proceed uh, until that two minute timeout is, uh, is reached. So we'll go ahead and close out of these windows. We'll come back to the script and then we'll allow it to proceed uh, within the two minutes. And the next thing that it's going to do is it's going to enable storage spaces direct, at, which is a cluster wide setting. And when it does that, um, the failover cluster is going to identify all of the directly attached disks and then claim them for storage spaces direct. Once it does that uh, and storage spaces direct is enabled, then we need to create a storage pool that is going to consist of all of the disks in the cluster and all of those are going to be joined into the storage pool from which we can create virtual disks. So think of virtual disks as the clustered shared volumes or the volumes or the NTFS formatted partition where you're going to actually store your data. And then the pool is kind of like an aggregate from a storage perspective the pool has multiple virtual disks inside of it. So in this script, uh, the, the number of disks parameter that I passed was three, and the disk size was one terabyte. So I've gone out and I've created three virtual disks inside of that storage spaces direct volume. And we can go ahead and validate that just by opening up failover cluster manager once it's completed. We'll go ahead and connect to that NetBIOS FQDN that we had specified in the script. And we'll go ahead and check out the storage, which is clustered shared volumes. 
and see that we have three identically created one terabyte volumes that are using Storage Spaces Direct. In my blog posts, I've covered uh, how to view these Storage Spaces Direct volumes and disks inside of Server Manager, which you can certainly do from your MDT administrative workstation. Uh, you just add the additional Hyper-V servers to your Server Manager, and then you'd be able to view uh, any of those volumes or disks. That's it for now. Uh, stay tuned for more videos, and uh, check out the blog for more details. Thank you.